Greetings from the Komahana Research and Extension Center in Hilo, Hawaii. I have been retired over six years now, but the good folks here still remember me and gave me space in this greenhouse to set up a demonstration project on automatic watering of plants in growing containers. The greenhouse door is open, so let's go on in and see what's happening. Most growing containers have holes in the bottom. When the container is watered, the excess water drains from the holes in the pot. This wastes water and also fertilizer. The purpose of my little demonstration is to automatically provide each tomato, eggplant, and pepper plant with only the amount of water it needs and no water or fertilizer will drain from the pots. A constant shallow depth of water will be maintained in the pots. Just as the upward water movement by capillary action wets this towel, the growing medium or soil in a pot will also be moistened. We will use a simple homemade float valve to maintain a constant water level in the containers. Water flows by gravity through a one quarter inch microtube. A tubing connector fitting serves as a nozzle. A rising water level causes the extruded polystyrene to rise and a one and a half inch square of neoprene foam is forced against the nozzle and stops the water flow. When the plants use water, the level drops and more water flows to maintain the level. The float valve will be placed under an upside down pot. But first, it will be wrapped with a perforated plastic bag. Here's the float valve in the bag under the pot. Next, a water level indicator will be installed in the pot. This consists of a PVC pipe and a thin strip of extruded polystyrene. The whole apparatus is placed in a four gallon pot which doesn't have any drainage holes. Here is a cutout view. The growing medium will consist of a mixture of promix, vermiculite, and coir. No, it didn't snow in Hilo. That's dolomite at the rate of about one tablespoon per gallon added to provide calcium and magnesium. Here's a cutaway of the growing medium in the pot. The float valve will maintain a one to two inch water level and the growing medium in the entire pot will be moistened by capillary action. By the way, the upside down pot saves on growing medium and provides an air space. The pots are filled with growing medium and fertilizer is mixed in the top inch. Each pot received 100 grams or 0.1 kilograms of fertilizer. Nutricoat Triple 13 is a controlled or slow release fertilizer over 100 day time period. Plastic mulch was placed over the pot to conserve moisture and seedlings were planted. The water source is a plastic trash container which is kept filled with a float valve. Water will flow by gravity to the pots. The water pressure was higher than the rating of the float valve. So an automatic water valve was set to run 15 minutes every other day. By the way, this is pretty high tech for me. Water flows by gravity from the storage tank to a half inch poly tube which supplies the individual float valves. The fourth pot developed a leak so we simply nested it in a new pot and that solved the problem. The fifth pot was strictly for demonstration purposes. The first pot did not have a float valve and received its water from a jumper tube from the second pot. But the first pot had a water level indicator to show that it did indeed receive water from the second pot. Almost a month has passed and the plants are growing without any attention from me. The plants continue to grow. Since I don't need to water or fertilize my plants, it's a good time to take a trip. How about a 16-day trip to Japan to see some beautiful scenery in castles and cherry blossoms and fountains and even go to their market and see what their vegetables look like. It's back to Hilo and oh how the plants have grown especially without my interference. 
there's a lot of green tomatoes and there's peppers which are ready to harvest. Ten days later the birds are singing, there's a ripe tomato there and more tomatoes will be ripe soon. Five days later, and yep, I was right, there's four more ripe tomatoes there. Five tomatoes were harvested and weighed 1.08 pounds, and they looked good from far. But one of the tomatoes was far from good. This appears to be blossom end rot, which is a physiological disease normally caused by a deficiency of calcium. But it might also be related to various interactions of water with calcium and nitrogen, and usually appears in the early fruiting stage. Five peppers were also picked, and they weighed 0.28 pounds. It's a week later, and the sound of the bell means it's tomato tour time. There are red tomatoes ready to be picked. There were 10 tomatoes with varying stages of red, and they weighed 2.14 pounds. One of the fruits has blossom end rot, but I didn't notice any symptoms on the fruits that are remaining on the plant. The folks that ate these tomatoes reported that they were very good. Many small roots have formed under the plastic mulch to take up the fertilizer which was placed there. A single application of slow-release fertilizer was easy and convenient but it's not as controlled as applying fertilizer as liquid nutrient solution. However, it's plenty good for our garden. The homemade float valves worked reliably in this demonstration, but other float valves could also be used. It is my hope that manufacturers will produce a compact, reliable, and inexpensive float valve which could be used to conserve water and fertilizer in container-grown plants. Although the tomato plants are still healthy and fruits are still forming and the eggplant hasn't started to bear fruit yet, by now I think you should have a good understanding of how sub-irrigating crops in containers can save water and fertilizer. So for now, I bid you aloha. Aloha.